In this lesson, we'll use a simple box modeling technique to build this basic bicycle seat. We'll utilize techniques such as symmetry, element move, add loops, slide edges, and slide verts, among others. Along with that, we'll create a UV map for the bicycle seat so that we can apply the illustration of the seat itself to the model we've just created. All right, so let's get started. First thing I want to do is go over to my Moto Preferences. If you're on the PC, remember it's under System. And go down to where it says Units, which is near the bottom, right about there. And I want to set my units to metric, and I'm going to set them to centimeters. And that's all I really need to do for this. All right, so now I'm going to go over to the Primitives Tools, and I want to build a very simple box, okay? So I'm going to click there hit the tool properties. Now something I just kind of discovered about Moto is that if you click on tool properties here, you get a panel and if you move the panel out, it pins. But if you just hit the K key to bring up the panel, it does not auto pin if you move it. You need to manually pin it to the UI if you want it to stay there uh, while you're clicking in the, in the user interface. Otherwise it will disappear on you and you have to call it back up again. So it's just a little annoyance, but uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, feature to know about. All right, so we're going to go ahead and plug in some uh, numbers here into the size parameters here. Now make sure the position is on zero. If it is not, click there on the gang tools, hit zero in any one of the number areas there <laughs> and, uh, and go ahead and hit return. That will zero everything out. So the size of our cube is going to be uh, let's see, on the X, it's going to be 15, I believe, centimeters. Centimeters now, I, uh, on the, on, excuse me, uh, that should be five on the Y. On the, uh, let's see, X, let's do X, uh, that should be 15. And then on the Z, it's going to be, uh, let's see, 27, I believe. At least those were my measurements. Okay, so once I have that all set and everything else is at zero, I'm going to click Apply. And there it is. Okay, now I can close my panel. Hit Shift A to zoom in on that. Now, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and add my backdrop items. So I'm going to go here, click that, add a backdrop item. And I'm just going to add one more. So I have two. So let's make this one the top. And I'll just call this top. And then uh, I'm going to set it. Uh, let's projection type to top. Okay. And then the other one, um, we'll make this the right side. So be sure we name it. There we go. And again, well, let's just set this to the right side. Let me just bring this up so we can see more of the tools in it. And okay, so now let's go ahead and add an image to each one of those. Um, I'm gonna click on here, image. I'm going to add a clip, load image. Now I need to navigate over to where they are and they should be in your assets directory. So this will be the top one. Click open, there we go. And then on the right side, I'm going to go down here to the uh, backdrop uh, parameters there. And again, we're going to use a backdrop image here. I'm going to add a clip, load an image, and this will be the side of the seat. Click open. Sorry about this. The, uh, the open button is just below the screen recording. All right, there we go. Now you'll notice they are ginormous and they don't fit our box at all. So let's just, let's go ahead and make them fit. Uh, let me turn off the side one for now so we can just deal with one at a time. I'm going to click on the top backdrop, okay? And I could try to manually size this knowing the, uh, the centimeters that I have there, but the easiest thing to do is click on uh, auto fit right down there. It says auto fit. But in order to make that work, I gotta uncheck that. I gotta check uniform size and then auto fit. And then boom, look at that. Just fits our box perfectly. Let's zoom in, okay. Right, and let's do the same thing for the side. I'll turn this one off for now. Side, make sure I select it. Uncheck, uh, excuse me, uncheck keep aspect. 
and then use uniform size. As you can see, it's kind of it's kind of squarish right now, one meter by one meter. And then I'll do the auto fit, and there it is. Okay, so now we have both of our images right there where we want them. So uh, let's see. The next thing I think I want to do is take this top backdrop, and I'm just going to use the Move tool, the W key, and just drag that down because I want that to sit underneath. There we go. Now you'll notice that it does not showing through the box and not throwing through any polygons. So that's problematic for me. So this is what I got to do. I got to go into the options, hit the O key or use this little cog in the upper right hand corner. Under drawing it controls right here, you click on overlay right there, at the top, and then go down to this overlay. And this overlay will show you the image through geometry if you're in orthographic view. So I'll click on that one and you probably won't notice anything. But if I go to my top view here, now I can see that very clearly. Now another thing we can do, of course, we can actually use the ghost mode, which is right up there. And that will also uh, allow you to see through your geometry to the backdrop images. So now the images might be a little bit punchy right now in that um, it's sometimes hard to see your edge work through the images because they are so opaque. So what I like to do is just turn down the opacity on each one of the images. I'll take transparency maybe 33, anywhere from 33 to 50%, you know, somewhere around there. That way I can see through everything and uh, I can still see my box and I can see my edges and everything. All right, let's just do a little housekeeping before we get started here. Let's go ahead and name this layer uh, seat. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and take these two guys here, the uh, backdrop images, uh, hit Control G and that's gonna put them in a group. And then I'm just gonna name this group backdrops. That, that allows me to quickly turn them on and off all at once. And drag that to the top and then with the camera and the lights they sometimes get in my way so I'm gonna do the same thing control G and we'll call this other stuff just trying to keep things neat and tidy and uh, remember let's go ahead and save our scene at this point So even though this is going to be a box modeling project, we're actually going to start with a single polygon for this project. Uh, with that, I'm gonna go into polygon mode. I'm gonna select that top polygon. And I'm gonna hit the open bracket key and that's going to invert that selection for me. And I'm just gonna hit the delete key. That's all I need. So I just have the one polygon sitting right there in space. Now, I'm gonna go over to my top view by hitting the uh, control shift key. As you can see, that brings up that pie menu and allows me to navigate on any one of these uh, directions, or you can just go up to here and then pick whichever viewport you wanna look at. So we wanna be in the top view here. All right, so now, first thing I wanna do is kinda of subdivide this, uh, this polygon here, but I'm going to do it using the edge and add loop. And the first one I'm going to do, now I'm gonna to go to Tool Properties, drag this out, notice it auto pins. And I'm going to click on Split in the middle. And I'm gonna select this top edge here. And that's gonna give me a, a line right down the middle, a nice center line. Okay, now as long as this is uh, centered, symmetry is gonna work for us, okay? Now the next thing, I'm going to um, hit Escape. And let's do it again, Add Loop. This time I'm going to uncheck split in the middle and I'm just gonna come here. This is where one extreme curve is and I'm going to hold down the shift key, click here to add another edge loops. You can see those building up through there and uh, probably wanna put one, eh, let's go right here maybe and I think right there. And then let's see, let's go right about here and one right about here. Actually, let me change that. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to turn on symmetry at this point. That way, everything, anything that I do uh, on one half will be mirrored on the other half. Now, <clears throat> if your symmetry says anything other than X, hold down the control key, 
excuse me, hold down the option key and you'll see that changes to options and that'll bring up a little pop-up panel. And uh, we wanna make sure that symmetry is set to X and not any of these other axes. And, uh, and we're good. And I'm going to go ahead with the add loop still selected. I'm going to click that. And let's bring that right in right about there. Okay, so that's all I need to do. Now, symmetry still on, I'm going to drop the tool. I'm going to go over to, uh, let's see. Let's go over to deform, element move, or you can hit the T key. And uh, I have the uh, panel up there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start shoving some points around here. And as you see, anything that I do on one side is reflected on the other. Now what I wanna do is I want to, you'll notice that there is a break in the surface here. And that's kind of where I wanna start is with that, that break area there. So I'm gonna drag these points in, click and drag, and that's easy enough to do. Now I gotta be careful here because I have two, two edges here. And I don't want to cross over here. So I'll just bring that one in a little bit farther right there. And then I'll just bring this whole edge in here. And, uh, and actually, uh, I think I'm just going to get rid of these three polygons. Or easier thing to do is just delete that edge. Now, if you're having trouble seeing the edges, let me turn it in ghost mode. Now the, uh, the, edge work is a little bit darker. And I'm just going to move this back a little bit. Click that top, oops, both of these top edges here. I'm gonna shift, click and hold on those. And then I'm just going to move them back. Remember, symmetry is still on. I'm just gonna move them back right about to there. Cause I think that's where they are. they're gonna to need to be. Now let me double check on my uh, right view here. And now I'll just speed through some of this for you, just adjusting some of the edges. And uh, you'll notice that I am staying in symmetry mode as much as possible and just using the element move tool, or I'll select a vertice or edge and just use the move tool. Now I'm gonna just add a couple of more edge loops here. I'll go to edge and add loop. And uh, symmetry is on, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I'm gonna put a loop right here because you notice I have a kind of a break in this uh, curvature right there. And let's see, I'm going to, I think, add another one right about here, right about there, okay? And I think that is all I need to do right there. And again, I'm gonna hit the T key to bring up my element move tool. And let's see. Oops, that one didn't take, did it? I forgot to hold down the shift key. Let's go back to add loop again. There we go. Got to remember to hold that shift key down if you want to continue the tool on other uh, elements here. And again, T key. So I'm just going to push some more points around here to try to just bring this in a little closer to the uh, to the break lines that I see on the model. Yeah, and that should do it right about there. Now let's go ahead and start contouring our model in a, a side view. So um, first thing I'll do is go over to use the control shift key and go to my right view and you'll notice that it's really hard to actually see the model because it's just one polygon thick here so the best thing to do is while in polygon mode i'm going to right click with the mouse to lasso that whole thing so um so i've got everything selected now i'm going to want to kind of shape it along this this top piece here and i'm going to do that by simply moving it using the W key. However, I'm going to use a fall off to make this work for me. Okay, as you can see, the fall off is right along the Z axis and that's pretty much what I wanted. However, uh, if yours is not, 
use these arrows to uh, move it to where you need it to be. You can also uh, reverse it if you if you want, uh, if you need to, that is. But we want the wide end right in the near the front here, and the shallow or narrow end of this um, of this fall off near the back of the seat right there. So we don't want that to move. In fact, I think I'm just going to move that in just a little bit right about there. Okay. Now, instead of a linear shape to this, I think I want an ease out shape. Let's give it a try and see if that works. If not, maybe an ease in, who knows. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move. And naturally, uh, it needs to be an ease, ease in right there. Okay, now as you can see, it does ease in a bit, all right. And yeah, now I might wanna move this over a little bit more to get this to lay down right about here a little more. And maybe bring that up a little bit right about there. I think that's pretty close. All right. So I'm going to hit escape two times to drop the tool and drop the, uh, the fall off as well. And I might need to just move this up a little bit. So let me just do that real quick. I'll use the W key and again, the fall off, linear fall off. And this time I'm going to move the heavy, the wide end there and the narrow end right there, just move each of these where I need them to be. And there we go, and then just use the up arrow there to move that. Now, I don't have a whole lot of points on this, so it's not going to give me a super tight fit there. So let me go back over to perspective, and yeah, so that's kind of what I want. So my next step here is to take these outer edges, I'm gonna click on those, the outer edges here and make sure that they line up with this brake line right here on the seat. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to use the uh, element move tool, but I'm going to make sure that I only have those outer edges selected. So if you see here in perspective view, you see I only have those outer edges selected. So it's going to leave these inner edges alone for me, okay? So let's go into right view and let's just start moving these down. Let's see, I click and I'm in symmetry, right? I'm still maintaining my symmetrical mode here. And you can mouse over vertices if you can see them actually. <laughs> and I might have to move this guy back. I think I might just move this back a little bit more. And might want to just do this in the top view here. Okay, so I'll just speed through the rest of this here. And as you can see, I'm checking both the profile and the top view as I go along. And we'll just make some minor adjustments to our uh, vertices and our edges as we go along. Yeah, I think that's uh, getting there. Okay. So now let's look at our profile view here, our right view. And uh, what we think we need to do now is go ahead and bring this edge down to uh, fill in this area here, this side, side area where the cushion actually has that hard break. All right, so um, now, as far as the uh, modeling viewport goes, we, we find ourselves doing a lot of switching between the right view and the top view, and the right view and the perspective view, whatever we're doing. So one of the things we can do here is uh, bring this lower bar up, just click that, and uh, open up another viewport, and that should open up two identical viewports in perspective view. And you can actually make one, uh, just the, say the right view, okay? And we can give them independent rotation and zooming and all that jazz, but that's up to you. Uh, if I hit the uh, O key or bring, or hit that little cog there, you'll see in the first edge tab, we have independent center, zoom and scale. So we can do that that way. 
you can move around and leave this one where it's at. And that way you have a quick reference always of the right view of the profile view. And you can hide it if you need more screen space and then just, uh, just bring it up when you need it. Okay. All right. So um, again, we are in the profile view here. And what I want to do is I'm going to just double click on this outer edge to select it. And again, if, if the ghost view is too much for you, you can go back to regular view to see through. Now I'm going to deselect the, these little front pieces right there. And then I'm just going to extend this edge down and edge extend is under edge right there or just hit the Z key for the keyboard shortcut. Click in any viewport and I'm gonna click in this lower viewport here and I'm just gonna drag that down, all right? And again, um, whenever you invoke a new viewport, you will have to go back and uh, set your settings again so you can see through it. All right. So I think that's pretty close. Doesn't have to be perfect because I'm just going to move those points around anyway. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to hit the T key so I can get my uh, element move. There it is. And we're going to zoom in here kind of tight and just take a look at it here. All right, very good. Now, let's say, for example, that you, I'm gonna turn off these backdrops here, that we actually lost symmetry. So you forgot you had symmetry off and you, you just kind of move some vertices around or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe you moved that vertice or that edge around and made this one again, whatever. So uh, what you need to do is get it back in symmetry because if you turn on symmetry and you select those uh, edges again, they won't uh, link up to their opposite or their counterpart. So what you do need to do is resymmetrize. So what I can do is uh, just uh, select my object, obviously, and uh, go into the options of the symmetry tool by holding down the option key on the keyboard. And where it says symmetrize, click on that and positive to negative, negative to positive, whichever one you want. Click on that and it should fix our symmetry. Yep. All right, so now um, let me turn my backdrops back on again. Now I need to move these edges outward a little bit. Uh, let's see. Let's select some edges here. And I'm just going to, let's see. Actually, I'm just gonna scale everything. How about that? except the front. Let's see if this works. Let me go to my top view here. I'm gonna just shrink this down because I only wanna see the top view right now. And uh, let's see, in this case, I'm gonna turn symmetry off. I could leave it on and just do a move and that would be fine. But um, I'm gonna turn it off. I wanna do a scale but I want to set a fall off on this, a linear fall off. And in this case, I want to reverse that. As you can see, the white end is in the front. So I'm going to go to Tool Properties because I only want the back part of this to move, okay? So uh, let's see, uh, I don't know if he's in as necessary, but we'll give it a shot. And uh, I want to rever actually reverse this so that the white end is at the bottom. And let's see what that does. Looks like it's doing it for me, yeah. And the front is holding. Now, if I move that out, that's going to move this front a little bit more for me, just a little bit. But yeah, so I think that's kind of what I want. Might have to move it a little bit more. Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna turn that off. I'm going to hold down the shift and tab key and convert this to a Catmull Clark. Subdivision surface, as you can see, Perspective, it's starting to look more seat-like, much more seat-like there. As you go along and you're modeling, you'll probably see a lot of little things that could use fixing. 
that aren't quite straightened up, like this little guy right here. If I double click, there's no real reason for that to be uh, kind of crooked like that. So what I like to do is just kind of straighten things up as I go along. It just makes it easier because um, as you uh, start adding more geometry to your model, uh, things might get a little bit out of hand. So I'll use the old uh, scaling trick on this. I don't have symmetry on here, uh, which is fine. I'll hit the R key and make sure negative scale is not selected. And I'll just grab uh, that handle and pull that in until it stops. And now we have a perfectly straight line in, in, the, uh, in the Z direction. Another thing I think I see that I could straighten out is this little area right here before I move forward on the rest of the model. Yeah, let's go ahead and turn uh, symmetry on and use my element move tool. By the way, if uh, you're grabbing something and it looks like, let me change the range here, and it looks like a lot of things are moving and not just one, the best thing to do is make sure that your range here is set to zero. What that is, if I right click, you can see uh, the little uh, gizmo, uh, on-screen gizmo comes up and shows me exactly what the range of that selection is going to be. So if I am have a really broad range here and pull it, you can see that everything around it moves. So if I just change that range to zero or use the right mouse button and just click and drag in the viewport, you'll see that kind of resets that to zero. And then you can go ahead and just move that where you want. So that would be, uh, that would mean that whatever you select will be the only thing that moves. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these edges here. All right, those edges. Uh, I think I can uh, just turn off symmetry temporarily here. And let's again scale this so it's perfectly straight. I'm going to move it back a little bit here. Then I'm going to hit the Z key to extend that edge. Click in the viewport. Bring that over here. And uh, I'm going to use the Y key and to translate that down like that. And then just bring that down where it needs to be. All right. And uh, yeah, so again, uh, let's turn on symmetry. Hit the T key and go here. And let's move that down. Let's move that down. All right. Great. And now I think I'm going to want to bevel this edge here. I could just add another edge, but it'd be just as easy to, uh, to bevel this one. Double click that. Oh, and let's, let's look at it in top view here too. Let's make sure that things are working for us. Before I bevel that, I'm going to resize that or Let's just use a move tool since I've got symmetry on. And this here, um, let's see what's going on here. Don't be afraid to move in close either. And I'm going to adjust it here as well. What I could do actually is simply just grab these edges here with the lasso tool. That's those edges. I'm going to use the resize tool, but this time the action center is going to be on. Let's try selection. Yes. And just grab the blue handle and bring that in. That should just lock that in right there. I think that's fine. That'll work for me. So now, uh, again, let's go back to this one edge here so we can get a little more rounded corner there. And then I'll just use the bevel uh, B key to bevel that. And I'll grab the blue handle. And that will just kind of round that corner out there a little bit for me. And let's just go back to this edge here. Whoops. Double click on that edge. And I'm just going to use the Y translate tool here. I'm going to turn that off of selection. And again, let's just move that up. Maybe I want to rotate it a little bit. Okay. 
click in the viewport to drop that selection. And I will hit the T key and move that up, move that up. I think that's pretty close to where I need to be. Yes. And maybe bring those in. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. And yeah, I will continue to uh, make uh, adjustments to the geometry, to the vertices and edges uh, using uh, symmetry. And I'll switch back and forth between uh, Catmull Clark's and uh, the polygon mode in that uh, you probably have to pull the poly cage a little farther than you normally would just to make the Catmull Clark's fit the, uh, fit the model a little more closely, at least fit the backdrop images a little more closely. Again, when you see little things like uh, like this, as we're sighting down here, we can see these edges aren't quite straight. Well, let me grab, ungrab that guy. And uh, we wanna straighten those out as much as possible. So um, uh, let me go ahead there. And uh, so then we'll just use our scaling trick, uh, resize here, and making sure that it is set to uh, scale on selection and just grab the green arrow there and the blue handle there. And that should straighten that right up. Now I noticed that the uh, break line we have in the top surface here is, seems a lot harder than the line that I, I actually have here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to double click on that edge, click on that edge, and I'm just going to bevel this edge here to add another kind of a holding edge here. So I'm going to hit the B key for bevel. I'm going to grab the blue handle and that's going to give me that edge there. And I don't have to come out very far here. If I bring up my properties, it's maybe what? Four millimeters and I don't want to merge them. So yeah, you can see it's about a half a millimeter. Maybe, maybe I'll just make that one millimeter. One millimeter, and there we are. Okay, so that gives me a little harder edge there. And if I need to later on, I can come in and add an edge loop, but I don't wanna to add too many uh, edges right now, especially in this front area, it starts to get a bit crowded. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And here in the front, I still need to adjust some things here. Let's see, what does this look like? I'll go to my right view. And uh, it's kind of hard to see. Um, looks okay in that view, but I think if I were to go to my perspective view, yeah, what I wanna do here in the front is, is make sure that this area here is as flat as I can possibly make it. So let's just see here. I'm going to do the uh, resizing, the flattening tool, and I'm going to do the action center as selection. I'm just gonna bring that down right like that, so I make sure that is flat. Okay. In fact, I'm gonna turn off symmetry and make sure that that is set like that. Okay. So that's, that's kind of what I want there. And I'm noticing now that this area here, this is a little off. All right, so that dips down and dips in when I actually need it to come down and in for me. Okay, so let's take these edges. And deselect that guy. Oh, actually I should work in symmetry here. Let's do that again. And I'll just step that up there. And I'm just gonna move those in. And my, uh, uh, my action center is on selection, but yeah, it's kind of what I want. And again, we do have a little bit of a dip in here that we need to take care of. And again, let's, let's select this. All 
I'm going to select that one too. So I'm going to resize. And let's see, action center selection. Ah, here's, here's the issue right here. I actually need to slide an edge. Slide that edge right there. There we go. Now these guys, resize. That should get that nice straight line both sides okay let's see what that looks like much much better all right so let's uh, go ahead and create the center hole in the seat here and uh, you'll notice that I actually kind of accommodated for that uh, during the initial build because that was a major feature of the uh, of the model here. So I'm just going to select all those polygons there and I'm going to, uh, let's see, I don't think I need to be in symmetry mode for this uh, part of it. So um, I'm going to also turn off that uh, side backdrop there. All right, and uh, I'm just going to hit the B key for bevel and we are going to bring this in quite a bit right about there all right all right so i'm going to uh let's see let's go to my top view yeah i think that's what i want now i'm going to go back into perspective view but i'm going to go right into this area right here you'll notice that's very tight and if i do another bevel i'll probably get a crossover so what i want to do is i'll go into symmetry I'll use my uh, element move tool, which is the uh, right here in deform element move. And I'm just going to click on one of these vertices and just move it out like that. And that's going to give me a little bit of breathing room right there to do another bevel. All right. And let's, let's go to my top view since I'm tweaking this right now. And I think, yeah, I'm going to move that out a little bit there. Okay. Again, um, I'm going to turn off symmetry and we'll go ahead and bevel again. This time I'm going to dr grab the blue handle and just drop this down a little bit right about there. Now I can, let's see, let's move this in. Okay. All right. Let's uh, look at it in top view. I want to see where those edges are slightly getting right there. Okay. Now I'm going to deselect this guy here. And with just those selected, I'll hit bevel again. And I'll, again, I'll go to perspective just so I can see that blue handle. Drop that right down there like that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete those polygons. Because I do not need them. Yeah, that's fine. Delete. Okay. Now shift tab and Kevin Clark mode and I can see how these uh, elements are lining up. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a uh, point here that I'm going to have to take care of probably using a, uh, uh, a holding edge. And the same with this area down here. I need to adjust that. So let's go ahead and just move some points around first and see how close we can get to what we need where we need to be with this. Okay. Now, as you'll notice, we're getting into a little more fine tuning here. So um, I went ahead and uh, grabbed this little bottom edge here. And uh, yeah, let's just resize that, just scale that flat as we can. And then uh, in our top view, I'm going to scale this in. And I don't have symmetry on, so I'm just resizing this. Resize it right about there. And see this back part is tucked under a little bit. and. And I uh, kind of don't want that. So what I need to do is I'm going to put the scaling tool right there. And that means that it's going to scale from here to there. So I'm going to just move that in a little bit. Okay. Now I need to just start moving some uh, points around. So I'm going to turn on symmetry. I'm going to use the T K 
key and I'm just gonna just bring some edges in okay so I'll just speed through this as uh, I'm making adjustments to the model as we go along So the next thing I think I need to do is add some edge weights. Let's go to shift tab because edge weights won't work. Oh, before we do that, let's uh, square off this front a little bit. Um, this, this area and I think this area. So I think I need to add some more edge loops. And let's go ahead and try one here. So I'll go to my edge, add loop. I'm gonna turn on symmetry this time and we'll just put one right there as you can see. That squares that off a lot more, that area right there. Don't know if I need to add one in the back. Let's try and see. Yeah, that actually does help. So right about there. You can see that's tightening up this little edge right here that I want. All right, now let's see where else. If I go to my top view here, I may want one somewhere right around here. I don't know yet. Uh, I do know I need one in the back here to hold some edges there. All right, so let's see if this works. Yeah, I do think that does work. Now I might have to just push some points around. Let's see about that. And you'll notice that everything is being Push back and I'm only noodling just really in little tiny increments at this point because I'm getting to where I'm I'm liking where I'm at and I don't want to push things too far. Alright. So let me go to polygons right there. I'm going to hit loop. Okay. Now I need to add an edge weight to get these to try to sharpen up some of these edges a little bit here. Um so I'm going to select the, those polygons. I'm going to grab the boundaries, turn off symmetry. I'm gonna hit Shift W to bring up my edge weight tool, click in the viewport. Now just click anywhere in the viewport and drag the mouse to the right or left to sharpen those edges of the, of the selected boundaries there. And uh, if you bring up the uh, viewport properties, excuse me, the tool properties, you'll be able to manually adjust the amount of weight. And in this case, we really don't wanna go any farther than, oh, uh, say 20% edge weight on that. That would be a perfectly sharp edge. So the next thing we want to do is address this little inset that's right here in the back of the seat. And uh, I'm going to turn on my model again here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just select some polygons. So I'm gonna select all these polygons and notice I turned symmetry off for this. And okay, so now I'm going to select B for bevel. And I'm going to go over to the bevel tools, um, bring those up, pin it down. And I wanna make sure that open boundary is selected. If it's not, you'll see it closes it off in the back and front there. And that's not really what I want. So I'll do that. And let's see, let's go ahead and use the that blue arrow here. Maybe bring that in just a little bit. And you notice that I'm going to have to tweak some of these areas here because they, uh, uh, adding more geometry to the edges changes the shape. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, go shift and click one more time and that gives me a more defined sort of um, edge there. And so I'm gonna just bring that way in, well, as much as I can without getting crossovers, which I've already got. Um, okay, so let's, let's not do the crossovers here. Let's bring that right about there and I'll fix that in a minute here. Now, when you have edge weights, um, 
the bevel does not give you continuous edge weights across the thing, so I'm going to have to uh, reapply some of these edge weights here to make that work for me. But in the meanwhile, let's go ahead and drop the tool and uh, just start shoving some points around to, uh, to soften this up. In this case, I'm going to just slide some uh, vertices. Go to vertex, vertex, slide, click there. There we go. Slides that beautifully. The next step is to go ahead and thicken the model here. As you can see, uh, this is just one polygon thick. It has no bottom side here. So I'm going to turn off the backdrops for right now. And with uh, nothing selected, I'll be in polygon mode here. And I'm just going to go over to the bevel tool. Click on the bevel tool. And under here, we uh, uncheck open boundary, but this time check thicken polygon, okay? So uh, let's see, we can thicken it upward or downward, and I'm choosing to thicken it downward in a downward direction. All right, right about there. And not too much, just a little bit, maybe, you know, a millimeter or so. That's all we really want on this. And I'm also going to scale it just a little bit, just a hair, right about there. There we go. So we see this settings there, one millimeter, one millimeter. And I think that'll do it. And let me just drop the tool. And yeah, so I want to make sure that I don't have anything weird going on here, other than the fact that the polygons are flipped because I thickened it inward. So I'm going to just hit the F key and that will straighten everything out. And uh, it's looking pretty good. Okay, a lot of times when you have edge weights, uh, it kind of goes a little wiggy on you. So <laughs> you just want to kind of watch that. And I think we're good here. Now, if you do have any issues with the bottom side here, you can always select polygons here. Oops, let's just go ahead and select some polygons. And uh, uh, and just do a smoothing on them. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Looks like I'm out of symmetry right now, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, let's just see if I can re-symmetrize here. Go to my options, symmetrize. And let's see if that worked. That should have worked. 
one will never know until we actually select things. Looks like it resymmetrized everything for me. That's good. All right, so, and then again, if you have areas like this that are just a little too tight, uh, you can always run a smoothing on them under deform and go to smooth and just click anywhere in the viewport and drag your mouse and you'll see that that kind of relaxes the mesh the geometry. And yeah, maybe these corners, oops. Maybe these corners here, maybe I wanna smooth those out a little bit. Let's get those little breathing room. Now I want to be careful because if you smooth them too much, they'll poke through the other side, which is what's going on here. So I'm going to uh, just move them a little bit. There we go. All right. So I want to go ahead and add a uh, material mask to just the top part of the seat so I can add a texture to it. And uh, if I select the double click on the polygons, everything is selected. So I don't want to uh, select and make a material mask for everything, just the top part. So how do I do that? Well, we need to just select only the top polygons. Now, if I sit here and go around this, it'll take me a while to just select all those polygons, which is not what I want to do. So the easiest way to do that is you want to isolate that top part of the shell. In other words, isolate the top and bottom shells. So I'm going in go to the edges here. I'm going to select that edge loop right there and I'll go to the front here and select that so it's an entire loop around the entire top part of the shell there but I also need to do the same with this edge loop here okay because that that actually is also connected to the top of the shell. Now I'm going to go into my edges here and I'm going to go to uh, split right there and uh, I don't need a gap all and we'll select that there we go now if I go to polygons and I double click on any one of the polygon polygons there you'll see that only the top section is is actually uh, selected okay all right so now I'm going to hit M for material and we'll call this seat top and that's all I need to do and if I want I can just uh, assign a material to the bottom one, two, uh, just simply by uh, using the open bracket key to select inverse, and then we'll call that seat bottom. Not that we'll do anything with it, but okay, there we go. And now I'm going to merge those vertices back together again, the, the uh, merge those edges that I split. So um, I'm going to do that in vertex mode and I'm going to do a merge and it's going to sense any vertexes that are co-located in other words vertices that are over top of each other which they are when you split um, when you don't have a gap when you uh, split an edge okay click OK and it merged back all those vertices and we're good Now let's uh, create a UV map for our seat, or at least the top of the seat. And uh, let's jump over to the uh, UV map viewport panel. Click right up there. And as you can see, uh, Moto has been creating a UV map as we go. However, it does not create the kind of UV map that is very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this UV map here that's already on there. And I'll go over to the UV toolbox and go down here where it says, um, near the bottom where it says delete UVs, and we'll delete those. Okay, so looks like we have an image in the UV area here, and I want to just turn that off for now. Backdrop none, there we go. All right, so now we need to project this uh, top part. In fact, what I'll do is I will take this seat top here, and let's go over to select the seat top. I'm going to convert that selection to polygons. And I'm going to shift H to hide the bottom polygons. So I only have the top polygons showing. All right. So now I'm just going to go up here to the top and uh, UV projection tool. And it's by default, it's going to project from the Y axis, the top down on the model. And that's fine. 
Now, um, since my image is facing the other way, I want to rotate this guy around. So I know here, if we look at our image, that's facing up. So what I need to do is simply, I can rotate this or I can simply mirror this on the, I think the V, yes. There we go, there we go. All right, so, all right, I think we're set. And this UV map is called texture. So now all I need to do is simply drag and drop this guy on here. And there we are. Now, if you wanna make some adjustments to your image as it sits on the model, which we can do easy enough, is go over to the UV viewport again. And let's go and turn on, uh, let's see, oops, under options, backdrop, let's go to the top view and you can see how this uh, map is fitting. So I'm going to hit the T key, I'm going to scale that up and I can just move my UV map around and notice that as I move the UV map, the model doesn't change, just the image on the model changes. So depending upon how I want this to map. And by the way, you can uh, hit symmetry here as well um, in the UV area. So if your symmetry is off, you can turn it on and that, that should work for you.